I take a lot of time planning my videos in advance, looking for anything that could possibly come up. Lo and behold, the second game of the teacher's tournament finals showed that I'd forgotten something. Here's an addendum on the final wager. For our example, we use the 2010 Tournament of Champions Finals between Jason Zollinger, VJ Balsay, and Stefan Goudreau. I put the current scores from Game 2 at the top, and the final scores from Game 1 at the bottom. We'll add them together. Now there's one clue left in Double Jeopardy. It's a $2,000 clue. If that clue were to go unanswered, what would our situation be? We calculate the best score each player can have. Jason, 20,400. VJ, 22,800. Stefan, 39,800. That means Stefan's in first, VJ's in second, and Jason's in third. For this example, we're going to look at only VJ and Stefan. So I've written the scores on the board. And the question I want to answer is, does Stefan have enough money right now that he has the tournament locked up? Well, let's see. If VJ wagers everything, he'll have 13,600. Add that to yesterday's total of 9,200. And the most he can have is 22,800. Does Stefan have that beat? Well, if Stefan wants to win outright, he'll need 22,801. Subtract yesterday's 5,800. We see that he needs a total of 17,001, which is a dollar more than he has right now. So he has what we would call a lock tie. He doesn't need to wager anything, but since it's a tournament, he risks a tiebreaker if he doesn't. So it's tough for either player to do that math in his head. Is there a better way to know whether you're locked out or whether you have a lock yourself? Well, similar to what we looked at to see where you stand with respect to your opponents, we can do a little trick here. The difference between their two scores from yesterday is 3,400 in favor of VJ. So we'll add that to Stefan's score, or in other words, we'll subtract 3,400, because that's what he's losing by after day one. And we'll see that he has 13,600. VJ will need at least half that. He has exactly half that, which puts him in that locked tie situation. So I'll give you two ways to calculate this. From Stefan's perspective, take the difference between his score and VJ's score from game one, negative 3,400, and account for that with his game two score, 17,000. So his actual score with respect to a lock situation is 13,600, meaning that VJ needs at least half of that, 6,800, to remain in contention. Or you can think about it this way. After game one, VJ is leading by 3,400. We'll add his game two score, 6,800, to half of that difference, 1,700, giving him an actual score of 8,500. So to lock him out, Stefan will need at least twice that, 17,000. Although, since this is a tournament, he might want to add on that extra dollar. In the actual game, VJ won a race on the buzzer, getting the final clue right and giving him an outright shot in final. He responded and wagered correctly, and Stefan missed, giving VJ the title. If Stefan had gotten the Juilliard clue instead, he would have locked up the tournament without the necessity of final jeopardy. And the weird thing about this is that if Jason had nailed the last clue, Stefan still would have been in first, but Jason would have been in second, pushing VJ to third. Since Jason also got the final jeopardy correct, he probably would have won the tournament himself. Wild. Very few players will ever play a two-game match. So, maybe this is superfluous. But hey. Maybe you'll use it to your advantage someday, and I hope so. We'll see you soon on The Final Wager.